What's going on, everybody? It is your favorite Aunt Timo, and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup. This is season 2.5 to the third power, episode 40, 42.3.0. <laughs> wake up calls y'all before we get into this review regular church announcements if you have not done so just yet go ahead subscribe to my channel don't forget to let me know that you stopped by i almost forgot what the hell i was gonna say let me know that you stopped by give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all y'all auntie on her hood shit today bitch i got a red cup with a little some some in it, okay? Um, this review, I mean, this episode last night was good. I don't want to make this review too long because it seemed like the episode was super long. So, hopefully y'all are ready for this review. I got my red cup. Oh, before we get to the review as well, I want to let y'all know. I got my Mikey Glam lip popping today. Mikey Glam Cosmetics. This is in the color Kiss. If you like this color, I will leave the link um, in the description box down below where you can get this. Many other colors. He's got a new lip line coming out or a new colors coming out for um, Valentine's Day, okay? Or Valentine's Day, however y'all say it. I will leave his information down in the description box below. So hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. We got Cheryl and Josh, right? Cheryl is in the car. She got a son with her. She's on the phone with Josh. She's back at home in Texas. Or I don't know if she's from Texas or her sister's in Texas. However, she's away from Josh. Josh is in Colorado. She's in Texas, right? Now, she's saying how she's, you know, excited to get back there to him. When we get back there, you're going to need to let your mama know that I'm not staying in the hotel. I'm going to be staying over there at the house. Um, so you finna have to get the whole situation straight. I'd be like, bitch, what? You know my mom don't like you, and <laughs> she like everybody. But he said, you know, my mom is a whole lot cooler from the last time y'all got into it. She probably like you, probably like a two now. You know, before it was zero, she didn't like your ass at all. So now you're at least a two. So, bitch, we getting somewhere. So she's like, well, you need to let your mama know when I come down, I ain't staying in no hotel. I ain't doing nothing there. I'm staying at the house. So she gets to her sister's house, right? And she has her little boy with her. Now, sister's asking, what's um, what's going on with you and Josh? Like, y'all together? Y'all not or what? Because as you remember from the last 2.0 season, they broke up at the castle. He left the ass and was like, bitch, you can chunk the deuce. You fucking crazy. I don't want to mess with you. Well, she says that they back together. And instead of her going back where her other kids are, she gonna go with I'm Brandon, and I'm guessing Brandon is her son. Huh, Brandon gonna go to Colorado to see about Josh, make sure Josh okay. I'm thinking, bitch, what about your other two damn kids? What, what they, they just gonna have to fend for themselves out here in this world? You gonna leave them somewhere? Like what's going on? Well, it turns out she's actually gonna leave her other two kids with her mom and daddy and them. While she go with her son and, and they finna go see about um Josh in Colorado. Now, this goddamn Cheryl, <sighs> mama is steadfast on a fantasy, okay? She got this thing set up in her mind regardless of what her and her, her Clyde, she Bonnie, they gonna be together. Damn the kids, damn the other situations, none of that. She wants to be with Josh. Now, she's in a, an anxious to get up there where Josh is so, you know, she, he can get out from living up under his mind. Mind you, Nick got an ankle bracelet, so baby, he can't go nowhere. He's on probation or pro roll or pro something where he got to check in with motherfuckers every week or every day or every some goddamn thing. So, sister's like, look here, you my sister and I love you. I don't like you and you're dumb as hell. But, you know, I, I, you know, to each his own. You know, it is. I know that sister's like, Lord, how is this bitch related to me? Child, later on, she goes and talks with her homeboy, Tony, who's a clown in real life. That's his job. He's a clown. If you got a clown nigga and he's a clown in real life telling you, hey, you making a mistake, back up, pump your brakes, don't do it. If that ain't a sign from the almighty, I don't know who is. A clown nigga telling you, hey, what you're doing is dumb. You're doing some clown shit. You don't get that? I'm going to need you to take heed to that. So hopefully everything work out with Cheryl and Josh. Because right now, the situation just looks real, real fucking bleak to me. I don't see... But you know, hey, it ain't my business. I'm just here to give you my unnecessary commentary on it. We gonna move on from them niggas. Next up, we got Brittany and Marcelino. Now, Brittany says her mom and her sister are coming to Vegas because her mom wants to get back close with her. Y'all, excuse me, that was my other phone. Mom wants to get back close in her life. Um, 
her and her mother had a real weird relationship growing up. She said her parents were alcoholics. Um, she said she ran away from home when she was 12 years old. They had just moved, I'm guessing, to Vegas from Alaska where they were. She came back home after three days. She was 12. She thought, okay, I don't, I'm not fucking grown like I thought I was. I'm scared and it's real out here. She tried to go home. She go back to the house. These niggas is gone. How you gonna leave your 12-year-old baby? Bitch, 12, you ain't got no damn choice. I'm gonna jack your ass up and take you back to hell a goddamn with me. You ain't got no choice in that. So she says, you know, oh, and then her mom and daddy stole a quarter collection. How you gonna steal a baby? Quarter collection. The guard gets your goddamn slit smoke liquor from the store. But you know, they were sick. They had alcohol problems and that was the past. And mama is sober now. Mama wants to have, you know, a better relationship between the two of them. So Brittany, you know, they're coming out there. Um, what, what happened later on? Her and Marcelino ended up going and picking them up from the airport. They came back over to the house. They're all sitting around. Marcelino out there flicking her wrist on a grill, doing up the damn thing. I ain't mad at you, Marcelino. I love Brittany and Marcelino together. I really do. Their relationship is like one of the only ones <laughs> you see is actually working out. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag somebody's relationship goes. So y'all, they all sitting down and they eating dinner or whatever. Um, oh, Brittany also said that mama um, was house sitting out in Anchorage somewhere and somehow or another there was a gas explosion and she ended up getting 80% of her body burned. She's clean and sober now. Um, and you know, she's just basically, she's trying to work on everything, get her family back together, whatever, right? They all sitting out there, they talking. And so mom actually brings up that it's good that her and Marcelino are able to be at home with the kids, right? Now, Mama kind of opened up that door. Marcelino kind of opened it up some more, and Brittany just rushed on through that bitch. And so, long story short, Brittany got to bring up some old shit from the past. You know, Mama, you wasn't there. You didn't do shit right like you was supposed to, and that's why a nigga fucked up like they is now because of you and your shenanigans. You know what I'm saying? So, it kind of hit Mama in the gut a little bit. Mama had to get up from the table, you know, go back to the house and chill for a little bit. Mama said, look here, I tried. Oh, Lord knows I tried. I was fucked up. I wasn't the best mama, but she tried. So hopefully, Brittany and her mama are able to get back on one court. They're able to get back to being mothers and daughters like they're supposed to do. Seeing stuff like that make me miss my mama and just make me want to say, look here, while you still got your mama on this earth, you better get it right. Because when she gone, you're going to be sitting back thinking about your shoulda, woulda, couldas in the world when you got right now to get it right. Get it right right now. I'm just saying. I had to drop that knowledge on y'all real quick, though. <laughs> I be preaching sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Well, Andrea and Lamar, y'all, they back at the house. You know, she done picked them up from the little old airport. They got a cake and a coffee maker for him. He off for of parole. Hey, you know what I'm saying? They made them signs and shit. They get to talking about the Mormons that they seen in the airport. And Lamar's whole thing is like, look here, I see how excited you were for that. My whole thing is, where the black at? Ain't no specks of black up in that nowhere. This is Lamar's whole thing. And I feel him on that. You want to be around other people that look like you. I get where Andrea coming from. She don't see color. She don't see race. All she sees is the color of the Lord. Yes. We are all supposed to only see the color of the Lord, but let's keep it real. You want to be around some folk that look like you, walk like you, talk like you every once in a while. Not saying you got to be around them round niggas and around niggas 24-7, but you run where you, I mean, you want to be around, you know, some, some black folks sometimes. I feel that, you know what I'm saying? Well, what, what did kind of irritate me, just a tad bit, when Andrea says she can't help it, that basically all the better stuff is, is over there where the white folks is and where the white folks is, that, and the other. Part of that is, 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 is true in a lot of ways. Um, long story short, I'm not finna get into a whole lot of nothing, but um, you know what? I'm not even gonna say that because I don't want to call this particular elementary school out. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone on that. But... She, she, her whole thing is, you know, she just wants to raise her kids in an environment where it's safe, which again, Andrea, baby, you can be in Mormonville 24 seven and it's still going to be that one crazy ass Mormon that's going to come and shoot up the place. You never know. You never know. And that's Lamar's whole thing. Child, 
they kind of going back and forth. Lamar ended up going inside talking with the son, Tennyson, and he's just basically, you know, just having a little bit of God talk. Tennyson is basically, you know, understanding him. He's like, I get it. You just want to have a little bit more diversity, blah, blah, blah. Child Andrew think that he in there talking shit about her, which he not. Girl, she come up in the house, start going off. They arguing all that. Baby girl, now she was like, Mom, we don't need to do this. This is not what we're here for. We got everything together so that we could come home and Lamar could have a good time. I don't want to argue. Nana got a little crazy, silent killer in her. I wouldn't fuck over that child. Listen to her. Listen to her. Y'all, then I'm sitting and chilling and looking at the TV. Then I see some prison bars. I see a, a, a guard. I see a bunch of prison shit. Next thing you know, Lord. I see a big ass glass window and I see my girl Tracy. Child, Tracy looked like deep fried hot mess ass shit. Baby, she had on her padded Ivy Park jumpsuit. <laughs> I said, what in the motherfucking crack is this? Now my boy Clint hurt. He hurt, he wanted it to work. He said it's complicated. Shit is just complicated. Between the two of them, Tracy says, look here, I'm coming to y'all natural right now. I ain't got no makeup, no lashes, no hair. I'm a real ass bitch, give a fuck about anything. I'm coming to y'all real and raw so y'all can feel me, I right? Tracy said, unfortunately, I got into some shit with an eating disorder. So they got me on this padded Ivy Park jumpsuit right now, which, um, time out. Tracy, baby. That's a psychiatric jumpsuit. That ain't no eating disorder jumpsuit. That's a psychiatric, that's a padded psychiatric, she on suicide watch suit. All right, that's what it is. Tracy say what had happened was they went to a Rangers game, right? They was in Texas visiting her people. They went to a Rangers game Afterwards, they were on their way home, but they was tired. Lord, their bodies was weary. So they didn't want to get in no hotel. You know what I'm saying? You know, even though they could afford it, they just decided, you know, let's pull over here to the to the stop and go in the parking lot. Let's just take a nap. We're going to take a little cat nap or some shit or whatever, right? So they pull over to the stop and go, and they take a little cat nap. Next thing you know, it's a knocka, knocka, knocka at the door. Um, Tracy said, next thing you know, she wake up, she just see the police can Clint out. Next thing you know, she got arrested, <laughs> and she don't know what the hell happened. She woke up in an old padded Ivy Park jumpsuit in a jail. She don't know what the hell happened. Clinton said he was arrested with a weed pipe. Clinton, you mean a crack pipe? So, y'all, they actually get the for real story from the sheriff, and what had happened was... These niggas was pulled over probably hot and cool to brown, pulled over in a, in a, probably in a one-way section of some shit. The police knocked on, knocked on the window, woke their ass up. They had paraphernalia on them. Tracy had meth on her. I said, bingo, right on the nose, whoop that is. I knew good and damn well it was something other than crack. That damn meth. That meth is a hell of a drug. It's a hell of a damn drug. Now, Clinton said he got out the next morning because he only had weed on him. Mm, I don't know if I too much believe that, but Clinton got to drive home like a broke dick dog to his mama and let his mama know everything that happened because right now the only thing on his mind is getting his goddess out of lockdown. Mama gonna chew your ass up, baby. Mama not here for the shits. Mama don't like Tracy and she barely like your ass. And the only reason why she like your ass because she gave birth to your ass. So don't go bother mama with this bullshit. Oh, but I will be here for it next week because mama finna get in his ass and I'm here for it. Next up, y'all, we got Shane and Lacey. Lord, they still damn arguing at the damn house. John's, uh, not John, what's that baby, the little baby Shane, he drunk is, is, I don't know, goddamn what. She get pissed off, leave the house, so she can go, go, and holler at John. Like, wait a minute, you, you, uh-huh? 
She mad at Shane, so she leave the house. She finna go holler at John now, cause she mad at Shane. Child, she go around John house. This nigga ain't at the house. His car ain't there, so she thinking, okay, I know he sent me a bunch of text messages, like, telling me, like, he let me, and he wanted me back, and I'm just afraid that he could be somewhere with, like, a needle in his arm or something, so the only two things I'm thinking is either jail or the hospital. Y'all fucking hate the way she talk. <laughs> Meanwhile, with all this going on, y'all, we got Shane ass at the bar with his homeboy still damn drinking. Now, homeboy's like, now look here. Do you know what you done got yourself into with this goddamn hot girl, Lacey? She, what is we doing out here, bruh? She got you out here looking real damn dumb. Shane said he loves her and he gonna be there for her. And goddamn it, she better not be talking to goddamn John because if so, it's gonna be a wrap for the both of them. That damn Shane, she just got you out here looking dumb, boy. That poor child, that poor, poor child. Girl, Lacey ass called a damn jail. This fool John done got arrested for pipes and paraphernalia and drugs and needles and shit. So now he finna go back to jail for a long ass time. Now she crying. She sad. She upset because she felt like she should have been there for him. Lord, Lacey. One of these damn men is going to beat your ass with a damn steel toe work boot. Listen to your auntie now. John is gone. Leave him where he at, okay? You need to focus on your little young ass husband and what you got going on here. Otherwise, he gonna choke the hell out you. Y'all, so we got, uh, we gonna start with Sarah and Mike first, right? Sarah goes and meets with a custody lawyer because you know she's going through with the whole divorce. Her thing is she wants to know what her, what her rights are when it comes to her daughters because she don't want Mike to just come up and be able to take the kids and, and do this or whatever. Sarah, let me let you know something, Sarah. And I hope nobody take no offense when I say this because I'm going to say this and I don't give a damn. But uh, Mike ain't finna take them kids. He don't want them kids like that. Michael is a part-time daddy. To have them kids with him 24-7 is going to slow him down. That's going to slow his 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 whole little old wannabe pimp flow up and all of that. He ain't no full-time daddy. He a part-time and a half daddy. So you ain't got to worry about the nigga trying to come and take them kids. He ain't going to do that. Mm -mm. But um, the the custody lawyer tell her, look, huh, the nigga ain't working. Regardless of where he get in the cash app and all of that, he ain't working the most that they can require for him to pay her in child support with no job. It's $25 a month. I said, girl, you just need to go ahead, keep on doing what you're doing, take care of them babies, your damn self like you have been. Yes, he needs to be taking care of them kids because them is his kids, but look here. He the one that's going to have to answer to them babies when they get older. So, girl, you keep doing your thug fizzle for shizzle being their mama and shit, he going to have to answer to them kids when they get older. But, girl... He not finna take them kids. He don't want them kids like that. Girl, meanwhile, Megan is, um, the, she's still with Mike, right? Mike is still in Texas. Mike got a hotel room because he damn sure couldn't stay over there at the house. Daddy was not finna have that. He'll fuck around, kill that nigga in his sleep. He's sick at the hotel, right? Megan go over there to the hotel to take care of him. She making him soup and shit or whatever, right? Because he all sick. I just put bleach in that damn shit. So, child, he lays down to take a nap. As he's taking a nap, Megan goes and gets his phone. Child, she tries to go through the damn phone. It's a lock on the phone. Then basically, he catches her ass going through her phone. Because he wakes up looking for the damn phone. She like, well, well, oh, um, I had used it because I wanted to have see it. And he was like, what you mean you want to use my phone? Because I wanted to see what was in it. Bitch got caught. I mean, it, it just is what it is. He then gets pissed off and upset. It's like, you doing some old sneaky shit. You supposed to be here taking care of me, but my, you going through my phone. and da, da, da. Mind you, he got a whole nother couple other bitches that he got in his back pocket in his phone that's cash shopping his ass. Probably the cash app this nigga five dollars for some goddamn NyQuil as it is. But you mad at her. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Chai as they arguing. Next thing you know, it's a knocker, knocker, knocker on the door. Megan goes and answers the door. It's his homeboy, Rock. The one that she kissed. That he got pissed off about. Chai, Rock come up in the house. Megan's like, oh, is this what we doing? You wasn't even finna tell me that this nigga was here. Just gonna pop up on me like that. He was like, look, I told you though. I told you I came here to take care of some shit though. Michael, shut up. He ends up going outside talking with his homeboy, Rock. He like, look here. Regardless of what I did. Regardless of me being a hoe. And me having 50, 1100 bitches. And me having babies. And, and me doing all my hoe ass shit. You still shouldn't have went after her. 
fucking son. He's dumb. He's just dumb. Listen to what you say. That sound dumb. It is what it is. But apparently, Rock kind of got feelings towards Megan. You know what I'm saying? He's feeling her kind of like he loving on her or something, whatever, right? So Mike asked him straight up, did you mess around with her? Like, did y'all have relations? Um... I didn't hear him say no, but I didn't hear him say yes. I heard him say one thing led to another. Mike is like, oh, so you don't mess around with my girl. whoop de whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. They all in each other's face like two little scrappy little thuggish, ruggish, bone-ass niggas like they finna fight. Mike here's a mess. All that boy had to do was grab him on top of his head and just shake his little goddamn ass around somewhere. He just sat his ass down. Child, they all up in each other's face. Mike said, oh, what you want her, you can have her. She upstairs, my nigga. Uh, Rock say, I done already had it, my nigga. It is what it is. Mike mushes him in the face and the episode ends from there. Now, what I'm hoping happens is the friend, after he... Got much to the face. He fall back. He come follow through with a right hook and just knock his little ass out. <laughs> I can't stand Michael Ashy black ass. You need to do something for your damn babies. You worried about the wrong thing. You need to be worried about what size your youngest is in right now and what your favorite color your oldest is. God damn it. Y'all, but the episode ended from there. It was okay. It was a little long. Hopefully, I didn't make this review too long for y'all. Um, 20-something minutes. It ain't too bad. But um, y'all already know, if it was anything I missed, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.